This is another view of our patch, and we're getting ready to uh, go to the vehicle in the uh, OPF. We're putting on our LESs and uh, getting ready to, to uh, check out good pressure integrity in everybody's suits. Carlos is uh, buttoned down with the visor down. There's Mike, and uh, he was relaxed and ready to go to space. Jean-Francois was, too. <laughs> Elena, uh, joining us That's from Russia, of course, and a uh, very pleasant day for us to go out, of, although it was 4.30 in the morning. I know many of you probably went down to the Cape and had to stay up all night to see it. Uh, it was a real nice night for us, and the weather was gorgeous, and uh, they tell us that we were visible almost to Miko. Our liftoff, our, actually the countdown and the liftoff were totally flawless from the crew's point of view. We just uh, lit up the sky all the way up and down the Florida coast, so we're told. That view in the corner is the view I had through the overhead window. I had a mirror in my hand that I could look out. You can actually see the VAB going by as we do the roll program. The f I like to talk about the feelings that you have during a launch. Uh, it's actually very much like the shuttle uh, simulator. There's a lot of shaking and rocking going on inside. Uh, you can see out the window flashes of light uh, that sometimes can interrupt your vision if you look outside too much. Um, also, the sound is like, uh, to me, it's like standing in a room that's on fire. It's just a, a very... Uh, low-level uh, sound that's uh, very similar to what you hear outside during a launch. A solid rocket booster separation, and uh, from this point on, we're back to 1G as we slowly accelerate up to 3Gs and then main engine cutoff. Next thing you know, we're in orbit. We've separated from the tank, and we are taking photographs of the tank here crossing over the northern part of Africa. Post-insertion uh, main activity is to activate the, the experiments, and here the space hub, the main uh, uh, cargo in the payload bay, and we had to open the three doors to access into Space Hub through a very long tunnel, as you can see. The Space Hub was very clean, and uh, we spent a few hours to set up uh, the whole module for the experiments and also get ready for transfer ops. This is a, a neat picture of a rendezvous burn. I lost, <laughs> <laughs> I lost my hat there momentarily, but uh, we get a pretty good acceleration out of the Ohms engine when we. Uh, make our approach to the mirror. We burned several times. Here, down at the bottom, you can barely see the station. Uh, we had a very low beta angle, they call it, which is the angle between the sun and our orbit plane. And that meant that the, the mirror was actually going to eclipse the sun for us. And you see it's getting dark in the orbiter, and there goes the sun, and there's the mirror. And to see that on orbit was amazing, because the mirror actually glows white, because the sun that you can't see is still bouncing off of our payload bay doors and illuminating the the mirror. There's a view that uh, Jerry was able to see of us approaching, and, uh, and then again our centerline camera view during the, the approach. This step-by-step uh, step we get a little bit closer, and of course our task is to inch in uh, gradually according to a, a given timeline, and uh, everything worked so well for us that uh, we had a very uh, docile contact, and you can see the sun was just about to come up and rise over the Ohms pod as we contacted. So this is all silhouetted here, but uh, we make a, a very soft contact there and uh, almost no oscillations after, after capture. Everything went smoothly on the pressure checks, so we had the opportunity to, to open the hatch right away and get a good, good view of uh, our colleagues on the other side. Well, here in this shot, you'll see what you weren't able to see in the uh, still picture earlier which is the, uh, the true feeling of joy and uh, celebration we had. Uh, Elena brought in traditional uh, black bread, salt, and tea. Uh, there's um, uh, Vasily, first time here. You'll see Jerry for the first time. And uh, just look at that smile on his face. Uh, and, I, and the obvious need for a haircut. Uh, they'd, uh, <laughs> they hadn't had a vacuum cleaner for a while, so we helped fix them up there so they can get their haircut. And uh, we proceeded on in uh, to do our first uh, press conference in the, in the base block. And uh, here's Eileen's uh, attempt to confuse all children throughout the world as to how we really move around in space as she swims through the mirror. <laughs> okay. Well, we continue had our, uh, our first press conference, uh, which was uh, shortly thereafter followed by eating of the bread and uh, actually, Jerry had his uh, pretzels that he'd been wanting. 
And as uh, Elena already mentioned, the second evening uh, on the dock phase, we had an international meal with food from all the countries represented by the crew. We had food from uh, Russia, America, Peru, China. We had, of course, food from France with foie gras and confit. Here, goat cheese. Please. And uh, no, we had barbecue no, no from... <laughs> <laughs> we had barbecue from Pity's, uh, dehydrated. And, uh, <laughs> for three hours, the ground never called us, and we had a very good time in the room. Here you see a chocolate uh, gift from ESA with the logo of the different partners in the International Space Station program. All and kinds of food down here on the table. Uh, as you can see, the chocolate shuttles uh, flying around. <laughs> Eileen thinks that some of them may be stuck somewhere behind panels. <laughs> It was really neat that this was all spontaneous, too, to have that kind of a, a good time with our colleagues up there. This is uh, some of the handover operations between Mike and Jerry, uh, as Jerry and Mike discuss uh, the equipment that's being brought over. And here we are d with uh, the commander of the station, Vasily, trying to figure out uh, which items uh, we need to bring over next, back over to the space hub. Looks like Vasily's stealing something there, but that's actually his checklist he's taken with him back to the uh, mirror. <laughs> <laughs> Carlos brushing his hair in the mirror. Yeah. Hair management is very important on orbit. <laughs> this is the mirror base block. With, you can see the table where we had dinner the other night. There's Mike uh, having his lunch, and uh, Sasha and Vasily. You can see. Uh, how much equipment is around inside there, and it's actually one of the more spacious modules. Uh, in some of the other modules, there's quite a bit more stuff. This is Sasha's bedroom. You can see that he has a very nice view out his window. There's a shuttle parked out there today. <laughs> this is one of these uh, beautiful historic views that I was telling you about earlier. Um, you see the Red Sea, the uh, Gulf of Suez, the Gulf of Aqaba, the Sinai Peninsula. Of course, uh, we're docked in Mir at this point. Um, here's the Nile River down at the bottom. You can see the Nile uh, Delta. As we uh, move on further to the east, this is the Volga River Delta uh, that we're um, flying over Asia at this point. Again, you can see the docking module on the left side that was added on STS-74 about a year and a half ago. In this view, uh, up from the docking module, you see Cristal, and then Spectre to the left, Cavant 2 to the right, uh, base module at the top. It's so used down there. Well, all good things um, had to come to an end. Uh, we worked very well together on board. Uh, we worked so efficiently, we had time to have meals together, and then we had to say goodbye. Uh, this was a much more somber occasion than uh, we'd had on docking day. Uh, it was actually fairly quiet until we decided, well, it was time to start uh, uh, saying goodbye and uh, working our way out the door. Uh, there was no great rush to do this, and luckily uh, the ground was able to give us all the time we wanted to, to get this done. Here we see the, uh, the hatch closing. As I mentioned earlier, uh, this was quite a sad time for us, and it was very quiet as opposed to, as opposed to the no, very noisy time when we uh, had docked. Uh, here's the undocking. Uh, you can see the shuttle jets firing uh, separation. <coughs> the springs in the, uh, in the uh, docking mechanism give us the initial push off from Mir, and at approximately uh, just a few feet, uh, two feet after we separated from Mir, I fired several jets to uh, get us uh, separating down the R bar. We had extra fuel, uh, because Charlie had done such a great job on the rendezvous, we had extra fuel to spend during the uh, separation. So uh, we had reached uh, quite, a high, quite a high separation rate uh, to increase the efficiency of the undocking and the test that we were doing. View from Mir that was downlinked of the shuttle. Uh, the Mir had great views of us because they were looking down at the Earth, but all we had was a view of Mir uh, against the dark sky as we looked up. After undock, it was time to resume more intense activity on the scientific experiments here. You saw Barrack, uh, Elena, Ed, and I were uh, all scheduled for those uh, about 10 different experiments uh, using the Barrack facility incubators and glove box. And you see here Elena working on the uh, Osteo Mars, these uh, experiments 
on uh, bone cells. We had also, uh, the glove box was used for uh, experiments where some uh, dangerous chemicals were used. Here are some tadpoles that we are developing their uh, neurovestibular systems in ZOG and we are not swimming as the same uh, tadpoles uh, grown on Earth. This is an experiment to look at the motion of liquids inside rotating tanks, which you may ask, why is that important? And the reason is because fuel tanks on rotating satellites have a, often have a problem where the, fu the fuel inside them starts to rotate in a different direction than the rest of the satellite, which makes the whole satellite wobble which is not something that satellite designers like to have on their very expensive satellites. So we had a uh, set of rotating tanks here, and you can see the fluid inside there rotating back and forth around inside that tank. And it's, you can see it's rotating in a different direction. This is a view taken from the inside. We also had several experiments where we grew uh, protein crystals. Uh, that's a, a new field uh, that uh, we've actually flown many times now on the orbiter. And uh, it's... Uh, stands to uh, give us some great benefits in the future as we develop uh, custom medicines uh, and for diseases that are uh, a challenge to the community right now. This is the output from our fax machine that I was talking about earlier. <laughs> we wanted to illustrate how long this really is extended all the way down the tunnel into the space hab. Um, view from the space hab, uh, this is our meal time. Uh, you can see the space hab is extremely spacious and it's a very comfortable place for astronauts to work, to live and work. Uh, Jerry's showing us uh, some of the fresh tortillas that we had packed um, that uh, lasted the whole mission. This is not a bubble. This is actually a blob of water that Jean-Francois had uh, made from a straw in one of his drinks. And we did our own uh, liquid motion experiment informally as a crew as we watched the behavior of these uh, things in space. Uh, one of the things we have to watch out for is the uh, degradation to our bodies when we're on orbit because we're not really fully utilizing all our muscles. So we had lots of opportunity to exercise either on our ergometer or cycle or on a treadmill. Uh, Jerry probably logged more miles on orbit than uh, at least anybody that I know. <laughs> uh, but uh, he uh, provided a lot of feedback to the community here on this uh, treadmill that we're developing for station. <laughs> Another form of exercise here, uh, the, the, the mass tunnel uh, motion. Actually, right here, we are, oh yes, that's right. Uh, almost missed it, going off the top of the screen right now is, uh, is Lima. Once again, we, uh, the, uh, the ground was able to get this shot for us one uh, night while we were sleeping. Uh, into view right now is the Nazca Desert where you have those great lines in the sand out there. We couldn't see them from on orbit. This again is Hawaii, that's the big island up at the top. And you can see the string of islands stretching down below. Uh, Maui, Molokai. We had a very, night, uh, very nice night pass over Italy. You will recognize the boot of Italy and Sicilia and the moon glint in, on the Mediterranean Sea in between uh, Sicily and uh, Italy. At our orbital altitude, we see about 16 sunrises and sunsets a day. Uh, the Earth is on top in this view. And it looks like a sunset. In, I guess in reverse, it could be a sunrise. <laughs> And it's time to come home. This is a, a, a clip of our deorbit prep. Everyone uh, suited up just oh, about two hours or so before the deorbit burn. It's a very hectic time. There's many things to do. The payload bay doors are coming closed. It's a major part of the events in coming home because once the doors are closed, you lose the radiator cooling. This is a view from the mid-deck. We're intentionally showing this upside down because many times you need to work upside down in space and do it effectively. On the flight deck, you see Jean-Francois in the middle. There's uh, Charlie uh, reviewing procedures for the entry, and myself. We had Ed, Lou, in the uh, mission specialist number one seat. Uh, Carlos is in the uh, MS2 seat, is our prime flight engineer. The entry, you can see out my windows, the heating. Uh, we reach uh, almost 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit on the outside as we uh, re-enter Mach 25 and slow down. You can see the jets fire, a plasma develops, as you know, around the orbiter, and we can see the reflection of that uh, out the overhead windows. Well, we're back uh, close to KSC here, getting ready to approach subsonic, and you can see the jets uh, pulsing there as we approach uh, the Kennedy Space Center. This is a, a view from the ground of us coming around the hack, and uh, you'll see here again in a minute my view out the front window of the head-up display. and. Uh, You've got uh, 
airspeed in information and altitude information on the scales on the left and right, as well as the position of the runway uh, outlined for me so that when we come down through the clouds here at about 8,000 feet, we'll break through the clouds and you'll see that the runway is in fact exactly in that position, showing just how precise the orbiter's navigation system is. And uh, you'll continue to see our view down through the, the lower right corner here as the orbiter starts its pre-flare. And uh, coming into 300 feet, Eileen puts the gear down. You saw the gear word flash there. Mm -hmm. Coming into the overrun here uh, with the gear down at uh, well, about uh, 50 feet or so, you can see uh, with this view the wind gust that catches us right here at about 20 feet and starts moving us to the left. And we just put the right wheel down first to arrest the drift. And uh, once we got it on the runway, it uh, handled quite nicely. So uh, little surprises come from time to time, but the orbiter is a wonderful machine and it handles that kind of thing just fine. We uh, rolled it down the center line stripe and uh, Jerry was hooting and hollering all the way home, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we were happy to bring him home. And that's the story of STS-84. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>